Hello, it's Scott Manley here. If you were watching NASA TV yesterday, you would have been treated to the rare sight of a pair of cosmonauts on an EVA attacking the outside of the space station with a knife. No, this wasn't some, some kind of weird horror movie. No, this was a planned spacewalk to investigate the exterior of the Soyuz spacecraft. So yes, um, the spacecraft, of course, was Soyuz MS-09, which had arrived at the space station in June, and then a few weeks later they had discovered a hole in it, which looked like it had been made deliberately, or at least using tools on the ground. Now, uh, they wanted to then investigate the exterior of this to see if there was any evidence that it had been sealed up or something to hide the work. So yes, um, Oleg Kononenko and Sergei Prokopviev were going to be the, the crew doing this. Oleg arrived on MS-11, and interestingly, of course, MS-10 was the failed Soyuz launch, and I believe that Alexei Ovichinin had also practiced this spacewalk, but... <laughs> obviously never made it to the space station, so the spacewalk had been delayed until this week. Uh, the Soyuz is actually returning in a couple of weeks, but um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. So yeah, in their Orland spacesuits, they left the Piers um, docking module, which is also doubling as an airlock, and then proceeded to move across the International Space Station. Now, to move across safely, they use things called Strela booms. These are extensible arms that they manipulate by hand. They bolt their feet into them and then they can get pushed around by each other and you know move across. Strela, I believe, means arrow. Uh, it took them about three hours to get to the Soyuz. And once they got there, the, the hole wasn't immediately obvious because, of course, the spacecraft are covered with thick thermal blankets to help control the temperature inside the spacecraft. These are about eight layers of fiberglass and fabric uh, and, you know, foil to limit heat flow. And then underneath that, there is a thin aluminium meteorite shield. And then finally, underneath that, there is the pressure vessel of the spacecraft. So they would have to cut through this, and that's where the knife comes in. Uh, they started cutting through the exterior using this knife, and then they were supposed to switch over to using scissors. The scissors are really more like giant metalwork shears. They had added, you know, they'd more or less taped on big long handles to them so they could be manipulated in their bulky spacesuits. Unfortunately, they had some issues working on this, and uh, they decided to switch back to using the using the knife and this meant there was a pretty ugly process of sawing through this. They were producing a lot of uh, fragments of fabric and foil that were you know, will be orbital debris for a while although given that they're probably pretty lightweight I expect they will deorbit pretty quickly compared to you know, other harder stuff. Nevertheless if you're a satellite that crosses orbits you, know, you never know this could be a bad thing. It's certainly not going to be bad for the space station because you know, the space station is going to be in the same orbit. But yeah, I mean, it, I find it ironic that while they were cutting open the fabric to get at the meteorite shield, they were actually creating, you know, orbital debris, which the shield was designed to deal with. It took them about an hour or so to finally cut out a large enough area. And then they stuck the knife underneath the thin aluminium shielding, pried it up, and began cutting that, which was, it was a lot easier to work, use the scissors to cut open the aluminium meteorite shield. They peeled it back and exposed the inner pressure vessel of the spacecraft, and initially they could not find any evidence for the hole. But uh, then they explored by around the outside by you know prying it up using the knife, and then they found it. They found a big black spot. Now in the camera views, a lot of people were looking at that and saying, "Yikes, that's a really big hole." But what they were really seeing was a black spot where the uh, whatever had been used to seal up the hole was black, and it was covering it. So the hole, I believe, is a lot smaller than this. So the decision was that they would sample this material and uh, take it back to Earth to figure out what it was. Um, and yeah, that took a little bit of time, but afterwards, you know, they, they got that, they took their samples, they closed everything up as best they could. They're not too worried about making a, a pretty job of it because they're going back to Earth in a couple of weeks and all this stuff is on the orbit module and the orbit module essentially burns up 
The descent module, I should stress, is completely fine. There was no hole discovered in that. It is too also covered in this fabric, and uh, but that gets torn off by aerodynamic forces, whereas the orbit module completely burns up. The orbit module is used for things like the uh, the toilet, for example, is in there, and that's if they need to eat, that's where they hang out. This isn't done on Soyuz missions these days because they spend so little time between launching and arriving at the space station. But, uh, you know, in the old days, they could spend uh, days or even weeks using this. Uh, incidentally, the orbit module is ca is kept hold off until uh, until they perform their deorbit burn. But in the 80s and before that, they would actually eject the orbit module first and then perform the deorbit burn because, of course, that would mean less mass and therefore better, you know, bigger margins for the thrusters. But unfortunately, in the mid 80s, there was a an incident where they ejected the docking, sorry, the orbit module, and then proceeded to attempt their deorbit, and that didn't work. <laughs> and so uh, they had to wait 24 hours, and the poor crew were stuck in the tiny Soyuz module, all three of them wearing their so-called spacesuits, barely able to move around, and without any toilet. <laughs> so yes, since then they've decided to keep the orbit module attached. Yeah, um, there was a couple of other things that they had planned for this spacewalk, but in the end it took too long and so those were dropped. They returned to the Piers uh, docking module. And uh, yeah, other interesting thing is that during, while they're using the airlock, the uh, people on the space station, they move to safe areas. For, you know, three of the crew move into their Soyuz capsule so that they can return. The other um, two of them were hanging out elsewhere where there would be a, a seal, just in case there was an issue with um, you know, docking with the space station, or sorry, with opening the doors and letting air out. So yeah, um, that was a really fascinating spacewalk, and of course it's <laughs> it's also really fun to listen to the Russian translation. The, the guys in mission control keep telling the astronauts to slow down and take a rest and be very, very careful. And the cosmonauts are, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, they seem to be just doing their own thing and ignoring it. It's a really, uh, you know, it's, it's fascinating to watch spacewalks because so much gets planned ahead of time and yet so much frequently has to be improvised on the spot because you don't have the time to necessarily check things out. Uh, and check that everything's all right and because it takes so long to set up a spacewalk and uh, you know yeah your time is very limited so yeah it will be good to see these astronauts back on the ground and i hope we can find out more about this hole and who was perhaps responsible i'm scott manley fly safe mm -hmm.